welcome back to the Masters of the Universe Classic Director's Commentary with your host, me, Scott Knightlick, the brand manager of a good chunk of Masters of the Universe Classics at Mattel. And today we are talking about Wondar, otherwise known as the Wonder Bread He-Man. Yeah, this is going to take some digging. First, we're going to have to really talk about who the heck Wondar is, or rather the Wonder Bread He-Man, and kind of why in the world we would include a figure like this in the line and even name him Wondar. So how we got kind of from this quasi-vintage figure to the classics version of the figure is actually an interesting story of toy history, lore, and mystery. But hey, you know, that's what YouTube is all about. So without any further ado, let's jump in to the director's commentary on this guy. Wondar, the savage He-Man. Dun, dun, dun. All right. So the character that Wondar is based off of is this guy, a quasi-vintage figure. And we're not going to come to a solid conclusion in this video. I'm letting you know right now, but I think I'm going to be able to put some of the pieces together that may have floated around. So this figure, if it existed, I know, if, was apparently a mail-in figure in the vintage line. There are a few images that have shown up of him in a poly bag with a vest, without a vest, there really isn't much continuity to that. And why he's associated with Wonder Bread and called the Wonder Bread He-Man is a bit of a misnomer. So it is one of those things where the mystery of the figure and the kind of pop culture imagery has actually grown bigger than the character himself. I mean, to the point that this character, you know, appears on t-shirts and unofficial merchandise and, you know, has even been officially accepted as Wondar. So who he is is essentially a brunette colored He-Man that came potentially with red versions of some existing weapons and accessories from different figures from kind of the 82, 83 line. Now, I was on an episode of Toy Hunter on the Travel Channel with Jordan, and it was specifically dedicated to kind of solving this mystery, and honestly, even at the conclusion of this episode, where he was able to locate an actual authentic vintage version of sort of the Savage He-Man, or as would be known as Wondar, he and I together were not really able to crack the mystery. Um, it was one of those things where, you know, it, the figure definitely exists, but the question of how it arrived to fans and whether or not it was an official Mattel product is up in the air. And a lot of that comes down to how it was delivered. So back in the 80s, Mattel did a lot of promotions. They did promotions with companies like Jell-O, and they did promotions on their own that were, you know, things like mail-in, you know, proof of purchase with a coupon to get free figures. And there were quite a few of these. You know, this is a great example. Buy three Masters of the Universe figures and you can get one free. But this was not connected to Wonder Bread. There was a promotion that was connected to Wonder Bread, and that was a trading card promotion. So we definitely know factually, and you know, there's evidence from vintage ads, that Mattel and Wonder Bread often teamed up and did trading card promotions. So you can see that one here, as well as the coupon for Wonder Bread in the corner, that it was a Masters of the Universe trading card set, and if you mailed away for it, you would get trading cards. Nothing was mentioned about getting an action figure, though. And from everything I can tell, and I've gone through the Mattel archive and looked and looked and looked, there, there is basically, and I can't find any evidence of Wonder Bread doing a promotion other than this trading card promotion. So this trading card promotion with Wonder Bread probably, you know, seeded with a lot of fans that Wonder Bread and Masters of the Universe had some kind of promo connection. Maybe one day someone will come forward, but, you know, with the internet where we are and, you know, as far along as we've come, the fact that nothing kind of stays hidden, 
To date, no one has been able to come forward with an actual promotion from Wonder Bread saying they did a figure. We know these cards exist. There's lots of pictures of these cards. And, you know, the cards have been cataloged online, front and back, and, you know, detailed, etc. But anything beyond the cards and Wonder Bread hasn't been established. We know kind of this figure exists in that baggie. And we know these cards exist. But beyond that, it's really hard to make the leap that Wonder Bread did a promotion that gave away a free Masters of the Universe figure, which was a brown-haired, brown, uh, furry, shorted... Shorted? Is that a word? Like, to wear? That is in the verb, to wear furry shorts. So where that figure came from, maybe this coupon... So Mattel did do a buy three, get one coupon that was good for things like Barbie and Munchie Cheese and Dazzle and Masters of the Universe, featuring Manny Faces there. But this was not connected to Wonder Bread at all. This was just an internal Mattel promotion. Now, whether or not this is the figure that was mailed to fans who mailed in this coupon is still a little hard to track down. There are images of this figure with this coupon in the baggie, But why Mattel would send the coupon with the figure kind of doesn't make sense, because the idea is you have the coupon, you're mailing that away for the figure. Why would they be mailing you the coupon back with the figure? So that's kind of the mystery. And whether or not this was the figure Mattel mailed you, if you selected Masters of the Universe as the toy you wanted with this coupon versus the awesomeness of Munchie Cheese... That's still a little of a mystery. And whether he came with, you know, the accessories in red, like you see there, the axe and the sword, or did he come with Zodax armor in black? Again, there doesn't seem to be anyone who's come forward with a definitive photographic evidence proof type thing showing anything other than this figure in a baggie with that coupon. So my guess is that this was a bootleg figure done and painted quickly and sold, you know, same as like if you go to, you know, some of those markets, you can find like bootleg Spider-Man and Power Rangers figures. How this character in this deco got associated with Wonder Bread, as far as I can tell, it was because of the trading card promotion. You know, I went through the Mattel archive, and honestly, the only thing in the Mattel archive they had was a letter from Val Staples asking who this figure was. That was actually in the archive. Val Staples is the guy who runs He-Man.org. So you can tell if you have an authentic one based on the the, the stamp on the back, whether it's made in Taiwan or made in China, um, since He-Man had a different stamp on his back than this figure which also leads me to think it was a bootleg, not actually made by Mattel, but perhaps by the vendor who had the tool and produced it in an alternate deco at the time. But that doesn't really you know, explain why we did Wondar in the Classics line, but I guess it does make him part of Masters of the Universe history, which is, again, why you see things like this popping up, where people even make you know fun figures as if the character existed. Now, we do know the origin of the black armor. The black armor definitely came with the weapons pack. Uh, you know, that's it's right there on the top left there. So whether or not the armor was applied after the fact or was also coincidentally done with this figure, whether it was a bootleg or not, again, there still has been no one coming forward with an exact coupon saying, you know, you would get this figure. And whether Mattel mailed out this figure as part of the Munchie Cheese promotion, again, there's, you know, whether you got this figure or you got Buzz Off or Manny Vases or Skeletor as your free figure, there hasn't been anything that has solidified that. But because of all this mystery and because there's been years of asking about it, this was definitely an awesome candidate to do in the Masters of the Universe Classics line. Because that's really what Classics was all about, was kind of all areas of the He-Man universe and kind of bringing everything together. And if anything, this character was fun. I mean, he represented 
you know, fan love of the brand and, and you know, toy mystery and, and toy pop cultureness. I know I'm making up a lot of words in this video, right? Pop cultureness as in the verb to be part of pop culture. So the way this figure was put into the brand or into the line was he was our first ever subscription only figure. Meaning, if you subscribe to the full year, all 12 months of Masters of the Universe Classics as a bonus and an incentive to subscribe, you were going to get a 13th figure. Now, this figure wasn't free because you had to pay a $25 sign-up fee or a $20 sign-up fee, depending on the year, and that fee basically covered the cost of the club attorney of 13th figure, the bonus figure. So you were paying for it, but this figure never went up on sale day to day. In other words, if you weren't a member of the club and you didn't invest in the full year, you couldn't get access to this figure. And this was absolutely done to you know, try to bring collectors in and hit the minimum numbers we needed in order to move forward with the year of product. And it wound up being a really good kind of promotion tactic. And as to why we picked one dar for the first figure, well, you know, I mean, there was definitely the humor aspect. Doing a figure that was, you know, kind of tongue-in-cheek and definitely an homage to fan lore and Motu toy lore and not, you know, a regular release, you know, carded release from the 80s as most of the other figures had been, well, that, that you know, that really made sense. So subscribers were told at Comic-Con that if you supported the full year and subscribed, you would get one dar, and you would get to uh, his right there, you see the map of Eternia that was a fold-up map that was mailed to fans. So we had two incentives, and you were going to get a unique figure that, from a Mattel standpoint, had very little tooling as well. Uh, he wore Zodax armor based on the vintage weapon pack armor that may or may not have come with the vintage figure, the sword, and then Zodak's ray gun, and, uh, and of course the map, which again didn't need to be tooled, this was a piece of paper, but it was done by Rudy Obrero, who did the artwork on the vintage Masters of the Universe toys, it's like the Castle Grayskull box, he was the artist on that, so we brought him in to do the art on the map as well. And then all that added up to one dar, and we, and by we I mean I, named him Wondar, completely as an homage to the whole Wonder Bread joke about whether he came with Wonder Bread. And when Terry got the Paint Master back from the Four Horsemen, he thought it would be a hoot to add these three dots to the back of Wondar's armor, and showed it to me. And I looked at that and was like, oh man, okay, I see why we're doing that, because it's kind of an homage to the Wonder Bread logo, which is made up of a bunch of colorful dots, definitely not in that, you know, pyramid shape, but that was not something the horsemen put on there, Terry put that on there as kind of, we call it a joke, or like a little bonus deco, and I was looking at it like, well, I mean, that's not the Wonder Bread logo, it's, you know, obviously an homage to it, and, yeah, please don't sue us. Please don't sue us, Wonder Bread. I mean, I wasn't really afraid of them suing us, but it was definitely something done tongue-in-cheek, and, yeah, there was, like, a little thought in the back of my head, and I did run it by legal, and they were okay with it. So we knew we were fine. I mean, we weren't, you know, going rogue or anything like that. But it was, you know, definitely done as a joke. And then as kind of a second tongue-in-cheek, he came with a bread loaf, which was the only tooled part for the figure, and probably one of the goofiest, uh, tools or, or, you know, items we ever actually tooled up, an accessory that, you know, did, did get tooled was the loaf of bread to also pay tongue-in-cheek to Wonder Bread. Fans later on made some other accessories for him. Uh, this was the Toast or Bread Shield that had uh, Wonder's logo on it that was made by fans. And honestly, of all of kind of like the uh, the fake Masters of the Universe classic accessories, well, I mean, it's a real accessory. I think it was done with 3D printing. But um, it was definitely one of my favorites. Uh, they were kind enough to give me a few samples, and I still have one in the package, as well as a loose one with my Wondar figure. So it was kind of meant to be uh, the, the toasted bread shield of, of Wondar, taking the joke even one step further. Because, you know, what's the point of a joke if you just can't keep going and going and going? And we actually went up using his bio to introduce a lot of cool elements. You know, things like the underground city of Tundaria, which was 
uh, part of what would have been season three of the 2000X series, where all of the, the renegade masters were living. And yeah, I mean, you know, he wound up being a cool figure, and we gave him an official name. He wasn't just going to be the Wonder Bread He Man, he was now Wondar the Savage He Man, as one of the guardians of the Sword of He which uh, that was part of the lore, too, was the sword was going to be the sword of he, and other people before Prince Adam had carried it, so he was going to be one of those warriors who carried it before it got passed to the true He-Man, which was Prince Adam. So there you guys go. It uh, Whether or not, you know, I don't think this was a Wonder Bread figure, it's definitely a mystery. My conclusion is this is a bootleg figure. This was not made by Mattel. This was made by the vendor or, you know, by someone in Hong Kong who had access to the tool and shipped it out to people. But if evidence comes forward to the contrary, hey, it'd be great to see that. Either way, it's a great part of Motu lore. It's a great toy mystery. And that's why we made it the subscription figure. It felt like a good place to put him as part of the line. And we were excited. So thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, recap of Wondar, as well as the other Motu director's commentary. If you like this video and the others, subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and let me know what you think in the comments below. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.